Carrie, my first real question, actually, before we even start here, I got to wipe some tears. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I want to start off by asking you, like, of course, you just came back from Scotland to at the mixed doubles. And the tournament started off like a little bit rocky for you guys. And then you went on this tier and then you go to, um, you play Scotland, you come, you like, you don't get the gold, you don't get the bronze, but like you, at least the silver lining of it all is you helped Canada qualify for the Olympics. And this is where I find it kind of interesting because in my mind and feel free to correct me, but I was like, so they represented Canada at our mixed doubles. We qualify for the Olympics. Wouldn't they still represent Canada for us? But it's almost like, no, you got to play a tournament again to represent. I'd be like, come on, you, you can't do this to her again. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's uh, when that comes out, like that news of, oh, the Olympics uh, or Canada got the Olympic spot. I got so many messages being like, oh, I know an Olympian. You're going yeah. to the Olympics. I was like, no, not yet. Yeah. <laughs> so I have to explain to everyone what that means. And um, and they're like, oh, okay. So you <laughs> still have to play off to get into the Olympics. I'm like, yeah. yes. <laughs> yeah. And that's in November. Yeah. I think it's funny because what I actually misunderstood it too, because on our channel or on our platforms, We've had Brad Gushu on, or Brad Gushu on, like when he was in Ottawa the year that they had the tournament in Ottawa for uh, like a curling championship, and um, I had sent out a clip of the interview of him saying my one of my goals in the future is to go back to the Olympics, and I was like, oh, now you get your chance. And then I was just waiting for like I was like, oh, that might need to delete that right away because what happens if someone comes on and they actually they they helped Canada get the chance, but they still have to be like, oh, that's that's such BS. Like yeah. I get it. But at the same point, it's like, they did it. They they did it for us. So why not just let them be the representatives? But who knows? You could both come out again and then people will be like, all oh, right, they definitely showed that they deserve to be here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. In some countries, um, they did get their spot already. Um, you could see like the Czech Republic team, they had such a big celebration. It was amazing yeah. um, because they get to go and represent their country so um yeah it's uh every country is different so we just yeah gotta play off again and uh, well uh, brad and i are probably both hoping that we aren't playing mixed doubles because uh yeah we to definitely go to the olympics with our four four person teams yeah i mean i, I would think it would be interesting but i wonder how many curlers would be upset if it's like okay brad's representing the men you're representing women oh and also they're representing mixed doubles so like can you give us a chance can you just let us have a chance here <laughs> that would be nice <laughs> yeah but i want to ask because we've had our walk around in a pre in a previous episode as well so i feel like some of these questions are going to be kind of very curling related um the same as if you have any kind of athlete or sports star on but I was interested in how did you get involved in curling? Was it like your brother an impact to it? Was it something that you kind of grew up around watching? Because in Newfoundland, I can see it because Brad Gushu is a name here that's like give gives us some hope of, hey, we can we can be curlers. If Brad can do it, we can do it. But like, tell me your story of how you got into curling. Um, I got into curling when I was eight years old. My mom got me into it. And actually, my brother didn't curl until he was probably about 13 and he was too cool for it <laughs> <laughs> curling wasn't cool <laughs> um so i started curling at a pretty young age and um watching my uncle greg uh, macaulay he won the briar back in 2000 and he won the world as well so when i seen him win that i was like oh God, that's what I want to do. Um, I grew up in a small town, Petersfield, Manitoba, and um, so all I did was live at the curling rink. Uh, my parents would drop me off, I'd play league there, and I would throw a gazillion rocks. That's all I did. And um, yeah, it, it's it was tough it, growing up in a rural Manitoba and having to travel and having to... Um, find players to play with you because not many teams or had any players out in the rural area. So I always had to either look at Winnipeg players and 
Um, I had a few that were local, which was nice and we could travel together and commute and, but yeah, it was definitely challenging and it had its up and downs, but I never, ever gave up. I had so many, um, tough losses where I was like, Oh, why do I even do this sport? Yeah. But I just love the challenge and, uh, love getting better and better, um, all the time and working hard towards it. Were you like involved, like, I guess, growing up in school, were you involved with like any other sports like basketball or hockey or like softball, or was it just more or less strictly curling? Um, I played a whole bunch of other sports. I played volleyball. Um, I really enjoyed that. Um, I went to actually the summer games for beach volleyball. That was a lot of fun. Oh, wow. And um, you wouldn't think so because I'm so short. <laughs> um, but I played libero and I loved it and it was great. And I'm actually, I was really good in badminton as well. And uh, I played a lot of that and soccer, did soccer in the summer. And I actually started playing softball in, um, when I moved to Gimli and met my husband, that's when I started uh, playing. So that was about 13 years ago now. And I absolutely love the sport. I play it all the time. And, uh, we go in some tournaments and I was hoping to play a little bit more this year, but I guess that's not going to happen. <laughs> I think it's interesting because we mentioned this, of course, in prior interviews, but like I was involved in bowling at a young age. And, you know, you, you see your friends that are involved in hockey or soccer or basketball. And it's like, well, why'd you get in bowling? And it's like, man, it was easy at yeah, kids parties. There's a, like, I get it as you get older, when you're a child, you don't think about it as much, but like for a parent, bowling is probably like the easiest thing to do. It's like, gather 10 of your friends, go to a bowling alley. We'll watch you. We'll rent out a room for your birthday and your party. And that's it. No one's getting hip checked. No one's getting a ball to the eye <laughs> unless you're like terribly bad. But that's how I got in bowling. But like people will ask you as you get older, like, why did you stay in? And I'm like, well, I was semi good at it. But then there comes a point where you're like, all right, this is the max that I can do. Like I never watched it on TV. It's not like I, you know, it's funny because you don't see the kind of ESPN or TSN clips of, you know, like, here's our top 10 bowling strikes or blah, blah, blah. And you're like, all right. They're like the famous one that always comes to mind is the one that makes the top 10 now in TSM where he bowls a strike and he goes, who do you think you are? I am. And I'm like, man, I could have been that someday. <laughs> I could have been that guy. But I like how they do now with TSN and Sportsnet. You get to see, I guess, more curling. Because when I grew up, I don't think we've seen a lot of curling. Maybe it wasn't just my interest. But now you get to see it. And in my mind, doing this podcast... I think it's interesting because you get to see the big names. Like if Sportsnet puts it on, it's like, oh, it's Enerson versus uh, Homan. And I'm just like, man, that's like Tyson versus like, you know, uh, like, and or like Tyson versus uh, Holyfield. And I'm like, man, I'm going to watch that. But I feel like that's very Canadian. If you tell that to someone outside of Canada, they're like, what, what are you talking about? I'm like, you have to, you have to be in the culture to embrace it. Do you find that though? Like more, like you get wherever you go, there's more Canadians that, know about curling than anywhere else like i know other sports or other countries have curling but i feel like it's really big in canada yeah it's definitely really big in canada and uh, it's starting to get big um well since um schuster won the olympics yeah. it's gotten pretty big in the states so yeah. uh, some people were like what's curling what's that yeah. um but now it's it's starting to get, become bigger and you know being televised as much as we are that definitely helps and watching on tv i know i got a few friends uh into curling they're like whoa i yeah. love this game they're like this is so awesome because it's different and you know it's every game is um different and there's just so many amazing shots being made and and uh it's so much strategy to it and i just love learning every single time i step onto the ice and yeah. you're always learning something new i i wanted to bring this up as well with because you know with other sports say with say hockey basketball soccer like it's kind of like a team dynamic you have a coach and you have sidelines now i guess in curling it's similar you have a sideline or like a, a kind of place where you meet to talk but I liked how in the bubble, I didn't notice it as much, say, in like the hockey bubble or a basketball bubble where you get um, the sound bites. Like you you might get a, a glimpse of it every now and again, but I love how you have been now in this bubble three times. So I want to talk about that. But like the sound bites, like, of course, my favorite one, there's Laura Walker's eyes where it just goes like making the shot. 
and where she's like, I'm back. And of course she has Liam. So that's charming as well. But there's one, and I couldn't mispronounce it here, but like there was one shot that was you and Brad. And I think you said, Oh shit. And then you <laughs> realized, and I was like, I was like, I don't care. I was like, if there was fans here, that would we wouldn't hear it. But where there's no fans, I loved it. And then there's the one, of course, when you were against Scotland. And then I think Brad was communicating with you, like, did that go in? And you were like, oh, you little sneak or something. And then the guy looked at you as if to think he was you were talking to him. And I was like, it's it's all in good fun. But do you do you find those moments in the bubble more, I guess, obvious? Like, are you still watching yourself where it's almost like, whatever, I'm just going to treat this like there was fans here. <laughs> Yeah, it, it was hard, like, um, when you don't know when you're on TV. Yeah. <laughs> and at that point, I didn't realize the camera switched over to me. And then I looked up and I was like, oh, yeah. darn. <laughs> Whoops, <laughs> my bad. And, um, but yeah, and you get caught in those moments. But that's sports. And, you know, yeah. like, sometimes you let the odd one slip and it's, uh, they catch you. But, uh, yeah, it's we don't mean anything by it and no no I hope everyone gets like a good laugh out of it <laughs> um, i just think it's more engaging for the sport right like because it gives you more highlights as well to like kind of you know like anchors to kind of either poke fun at it or like something that's trendy of course on like a social media but to me it's just interesting because now when you're in a bubble there's like less fans but it's like you get more of those moments like i was actually um because i i discussed it with one of my friends down here that plays curling and i was like you don't see that in say hockey or soccer or whatever, when a goal gets scored on them and then you hear them talk about it where in curling, I kind of made fun of it. Cause I'm like, all right, there's the shot being made and they're right behind those two curlers. And they're like, yeah, I think if we do this, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, they can hear you. Like they know what you're talking about. But at the same point, my friend was like, but what are they going to do about it? They can't stop them and be like, actually don't do that because we're going to do the opposite. It's like, it's a strategy game, which is like, very interesting because I don't think I thought of curling as very strategic, but yeah. now after seeing po like, I guess the bubble atmosphere and you actually get these conversations where it's like, what about if I aimed here? And that's where I want to go. I'm like, man, there's a lot of just not like, just here you go, throw the rock and hope it goes somewhere. It's like, you got to yeah. hope it curls. Yeah. You got to hope it sweeps the right way. Like <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot more to it than just, getting in the hack and just whipping it down there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I feel like if I was there, like, I feel like someone was like, we're going to invite you have to go curling. I'd be like, okay. And then I just go and they'd be like, man, Brian, you're just, you're, I'm just like, I don't know what you want me to do. They're like, think about it. I'm like, okay. Like, but yeah. I guess it comes with time with anything, right? Like when someone curls a, a bowling ball a certain way or a certain way that they, they toss it. So like, do you find when you're making shots? Cause of course you make a lot of good shots. Uh, I think there was, the terminology they said i think you're one of the only ones to do a snowman in, in curling so i mean they gotta be some practice to go along with that like do you spend time at the rink like setting things up where you're like okay let's see if i can make this shot like how does that all come to be well it's just all the reps that you put in and uh just practicing just getting and being consistent with your release is yeah is huge um and if you're always playing with it then it's going to be challenging to make shots so yeah i just go out there and i set up some shots and i definitely focus a lot on like just my kick weights and and set up my speed traps and things like that i don't necessarily um set up all these big shots and, yeah yeah <laughs> uh, it just comes with with reps that you put into it and how much practice time and um I try and get out basically every day after work for at least an hour and just throw. I can't throw as much as I used to. Yeah. I'm getting older now. <laughs> the body can't always hold up that much. Um, but uh, yeah, it's making those shots. It just, it'll just come. And, um, and just being in that um, setting as well and getting comfortable with that. And uh, yeah, it's, yeah, kind of. Oh. <laughs> how, how do you balance, I guess, like work and curling? Because I know everyone has, say, outside of curling, they have their own, um, I guess, career. You know, some people, like, it's kind of interesting to me to, to realize it because I just look at it and be like, well, they're curlers. That's their career. But, like, you see people being, like, real estate agents. You know, sometimes they can be in nursing homes for you. I think it's a rehabilitation assistant. Um, so like, 
how do you manage both? Um, it's challenging, but I have such a great support system at my work um, to let me chase my dreams and they support me 100%. And I have so many residents who absolutely love it <laughs> and seeing me on TV, they phone me. Um, I actually just had a resident call me the other day and be like, I finally got a hold of you. She's like, I've been trying to get a hold of you for such a long time. I was like, well, I was in Scotland. So it was yeah. really hard to get like with the time change. She's like, oh, that's right. And yeah. she's like, when are you coming back to work? I said, I'll be back hopefully on Tuesday. She's like, oh, thank goodness. Got so many questions to ask you. <laughs> so they're all excited to see me and, um, they love watching my games on TV and all my coworkers and my bosses. And, you know, like if it wasn't for them, I also wouldn't be able to do what I love. And yeah. um, same with my family. They allow me to be able to chase my dreams and it's um, pretty special. Yeah, I, I can imagine though when you go into work, it's almost like you know every time you come back with like a, an award or a thing, they're like, okay, bring out the streamers again for, her. and it's just uh, like, <laughs> it's like, it's like, oh man, like, great, awesome. But yeah, I do think that's interesting because of course working at a, um, it's like, was it a personal, is it a, a retirement home or a uh, personal care home? A personal care home. So like, you know, I do think it's interesting that you know they will ask you questions or they they watch you because you know, I guess it's a good feeling for them because it's like, it's one of our own that we're watching as well. And then when they actually get to see you, I, I, it's a part of me is wondering, do you ever get annoyed with so many questions that if they ask you, or are they more or less kind of respectful and be like, oh, great. If, if Keith asks that question, I'm going to be in the room. So I know her answer. Not like, you know, Keith asks it, Darcy asks it, like there's 20 odd people that ask the same question. <laughs> oh, I, I absolutely love it. Uh, anytime they ask me questions, I'm always willing to answer them. And uh, sometimes they're criticizing me. Being like, oh, what really? Are you thinking there? I'm like, hey, <laughs> it's easy when you're watching on the couch, but it's yeah. like watching or doing it live. It's, it's tough. <laughs> yeah. But I, uh, they, uh, they just absolutely love it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's great because I guess sometimes um, we, I guess, underestimate it or we overlook the fact that like, you know, when we look at, say, uh, I know I bring these examples back, but like for hockey or basketball, that is their career. And for something like curling that, you know, takes place between, say, September to October to April to May, to giving give or take. Yeah. But, you know, for the rest of that time you're thinking, oh, well, okay, they're relaxing. But when you see like they actually have a second career, like, man, that's a lot of more credit to you. And especially now during COVID, um, like take me through that because of course someone actually told me on this feed, they were like, yeah, I said, I was, I was getting ready to do an interview with you. And they were like, don't ask her any questions. Just spend the whole time thanking her for her, her, uh, for her duties. And like, and I was like, oh, well, that's not the whole point of this interview. But, <laughs> but, but like, I guess obviously like, you know, thank you for your service as well. But like, how do you, during COVID, like, how did you manage? How was your mental health during all this time as well? Because again, three times in a bubble where you're like, you're outside of pretty much all the normal scope, there's restrictions. And then of course, when you go to work, go to work, there's restrictions. And like, you got to be careful because you have like uh, two daughters at home, a husband that you want to make sure that like, you don't infect them. You want to keep it safe. So tell me, I guess, all your process going through this. Yeah, it's definitely been challenging mentally. Um, I've been away from work now for four months and um, that's been difficult because I haven't, it's been such a different routine and uh, um, also traveling so much and being in a bubble in a hotel room for that long. Like I was in a hotel room for two yeah. months, at least the other two months, I got to come home for a couple of weeks, but I never got to go back to work or anything because of quarantine. Uh, I'm having to quarantine at home. And I was able to see my family though, which was good. Um, and if I wasn't able to see my family during those quarantine times, then that would, I wouldn't have been able to do it. It was extremely hard. Um, two months away from my girls and my husband and family and friends, yeah. like, holy man, I had yeah. cried so many tears in that bubble. Um, 
when I was in Scotland, that was really hard. The first three days where you had to sit in a hotel room by yourself and do nothing. Oh, wow. Um, I uh, phoned my girls. It was 1 a.m. in Scotland and I called them. I called home. I just couldn't sleep. I was like, I just needed to hear your voices. And yeah. they're like, Mom, why are you crying? I'm like, I just yeah. miss you. And uh, they're like, it's OK, Mom, you'll be coming home soon. You got yeah. 10 more days. I'm like, yeah. yep, we're counting them down. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it, it was extremely hard. And um, but I was chasing my dreams. So yeah. um, also doing something that I absolutely love. And um, my children love watching me too. So they were very proud of me and uh, they were watching in their classrooms. Uh, their teachers were playing the games for them and they sat underneath the screen and took a big picture. And they, when they called me, they're like, mommy, we're so proud of you. And uh, that brought tears to my eyes, brings tears to my eyes now. So yeah, yeah I, cause I, I was gonna say like, the worst part about all that is like, just say calling at 1am. And then of course they're, they're obviously going to answer and pick up, but it's like what you don't want to happen is to have the radio play lone stars. I'm already there. You're like, are you, are you kidding me right now? It's like, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> or like having Michael Bublé's uh, like home. Come on. You're like, what are you doing? Like, yeah. why are you oh, doing this? Thing? I may have listened to some of those songs and just cried in my room. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I like, there, there are moments that you like, you want to cry to like certain songs or you want to play, but then there's certain moments where you're like, really you're putting this on at this moment right now. Like, why would you do that to me? Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> but no, I, I think I, I was just more or less interested in that because, you know, some people go through the bubble once in their lifetime. Uh, and I, we hope that doesn't happen anymore, but it's like three times. Was there ever a point where you're like, no, I don't want to <laughs> like, forget it i've been here once i've been here twice it's like the third time it's like you know jokes on you or, or it's like fool me once fool me twice you're not fooling me the third time no <laughs> but yeah like, like i guess first... you're, you're, you're right like you want to follow your dream but did it ever come to that point where you're like you know what there comes a time where no <laughs> well it was uh like the going to the scotties like we were there for two weeks and then we got to come home for a couple weeks and then I headed back again for mixed doubles for about a week and a half. And then I came back for another two weeks. And then th the most challenging part was the two, almost two months. Yeah. Um, if we could have maybe broke that up a bit, I think that would have been a lot easier. Um, definitely. Um, like playing the two slams and then go heading straight yeah. into worlds. Like it was a lot. And uh, I think I played about 63 games um, in the bubble. So oh, wow. <laughs> for myself and that's, that's a lot of curling in four months. <laughs> yeah. It's, I mean, it, it all works out. Cause you come out with, of course you had the 2020 Scotties. And then of course, when COVID happened, you didn't get to go, to do what you had to do there, but it's like, then you win it next year. I feel like that's a good redemption thing. Cause I, I think it was funny when someone posted with the mixed doubles online and I thought it was an interest. I, I was wondering why they chose the song. And then afterwards I figured it out, but it was like, we're going to take on the world from like girl meets world. I was like, why this song? And I'm like, Oh, okay. I get it now. They're taking on the world. It makes sense. But mm -hmm. like, at least you, you get something out of it. But my biggest takeaway from like the bubble in terms of just say your career in that was I'm like, man, like, her and Rachel Holman must be either like best buddies or like, they're like, you know, sitting at tables. They're like staring each other off. Like I, I had enough of you. <laughs> like I seen you. It's like, you'd ruined my undefeated streak. You made me go seven and one, but then I beat you, but then you beat me, but then I beat you again. It's almost like, I feel like there's a friendly competition, but there's a part of me that's wondering like if there's ever crossing paths where it's like, man, I could have had that. And then you got in my way. <laughs> Um, it's always great battles against Rachel and her team. And, uh, we're actually good friends, uh, off yeah. the X2. So, um, I absolutely pl love playing against them and they're such great competitors and, uh, great people. Yeah. It, it's just funny. Cause like, I, I look at it from a standpoint, if you're going up against the same person time and time again, like if you get a few wins on them, good. But imagine if you went up against the same person every time you're like, Oh, come on. Can like, can you not, can, can, can you not be here? It's like, I look at it from the standpoint of say Edmonton versus like the Islanders. Like I wasn't born, but just say in the Stanley cup finals in like the eighties, there has to come a point where you're like, can you please, can you not be here? Like we, we have a good team too. <laughs> 
there's always that one team where you always play. It's yeah. every year. There's always one team where you'll play at least ten times, and I'm like, yeah. holy man! Like every like, <laughs> every spot spell we get into, I'm like, oh, yeah. we're playing them again. Shocker! Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's almost like the point when they don't make it, you're like, okay, you're like, it's like almost a, a better, or I guess a boost of confidence where you're like, finally, a new, a new opponent. Let's do this. Like, yeah. <laughs> but I just thought it was interesting because it, it's like a win-win situation. Cause of course she wins something in the bubble. You win something in the bubble where I felt like at the end of it, no matter what, it's like, can we just have like balloons and confetti for both of them? Because, you know, they both want something in this kind of weird bubble situation. Um, but yeah, you get some kind of really cool aspects out of the bubble. And of course, yeah, I, I enjoyed it because I think Laura Walker said in her episode that, and I never even thought about it, but it just goes to show how well they planned ahead. They were, She said that there was a um, a phone line that you could call, like if you were in the bubble and you know you weren't doing that well, like there was someone obviously there for you. And I'm like, okay, that's good. They're thinking ahead of people's mental health because sometimes people are just like, all right, like just let's get them in. Let's get this thing over with and whatever, like whatever struggles they're going through, whatever. Like we didn't think about it, but I like how she mentioned there was a mental health hotline. Now she never mentioned names who called it. Obviously I didn't expect her to say it or anything, but like, it's great that they at least had that. Cause there could be people out there that are missing again, their husband, their kid. Um, maybe they don't have that, but they just want to talk to somebody to be like, Hey, I'm not doing that great here. Can like, can you help me through this? Yeah, yeah, and they, they had that support for someone to reach out to. Um, I definitely, if I, I was struggling, I uh, yeah, called home a lot, yeah. I FaceTimed a lot, and um, even FaceTimed a lot of friends that I wouldn't normally FaceTime <laughs> and uh, played some even games. Uh, we had a game night uh, with the three other my friends, and that definitely helped and passed the time. And uh, yeah, even Laura told me, she's like, Carrie, if you ever need anything, please reach out. Uh, she's yeah. like, I, you're going to be in this bubble for a very long time and yeah. I'm always here for you. And I really appreciated that. So it was nice to hear that support. Yeah, it's it's kind of interesting because like there are aspects of it, of course, when you are competitive, you're competing against each other. But I do like behind the scenes when you realize, like, okay, like they're friends. They're Of course, they're all in this sport. You get to know each other through this. But I just think it's interesting because there are some times where you're like, okay, I wonder how they do get along behind the scenes. Or like, I wonder like, are they like, it's in the moment they're competitive, but um, yeah, I do. I think that's really cool. The other thing that I want to mention just from the Newfoundland perspective, because I, I, I do have a whole bunch of curling related questions here as well, but it's like you teamed up with Brad Gushu. Now Newfoundlanders are known for a talking fast, B <laughs> having our own lingo. Were there times when you were like, I, I would have loved to see it if it was actually recorded on a live mic, but were there ever moments where you're like, Brad, can you, can you translate that into English for me? Cause I don't understand what you're saying. <laughs> uh, no, actually he wasn't too bad, but some of the things I was like, Oh, okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I didn't really notice too much uh, with Brad and um, yeah, he definitely, I've noticed it before, like with other different people but like it's yeah I, I didn't really notice too much so it was, yeah. it, <laughs> there's it, a couple it, of words that he always said and i was like oh yeah that, that's that's your thing <laughs> yeah, that, yeah yeah that, that's your thing yeah it's like i i always think about because when i'm playing hockey up away so like if you're playing i play ball hockey like goalie and you have girls and guys in your team but like buys we say the word buys a lot so it means like everybody to me but it's almost like I would tell people when you get scored on, it's like three, nothing. You're like, buys come back and play defense. And you get a few girls looking at me like, we play on this team too. I'm like, it's collective. It's not just boys. <laughs> it's everybody. Or the one that I, I use not so often in hockey, but I've used it on the phone with friends where it's like, stay where you're two till I come where you're at, which is basically like, stay there. I'm coming. But they're like, what, what do you want me to do? And I'm just like, Oh, right. Totally different language barrier here. So it's like, just stay there. <laughs> That's what Next I mean. Next time I really got to pay attention more, I think. Yeah. yeah. There, I'm <laughs> sure there's times that he was saying things and you were just there like, you're like, I think this is what he means. I'm just going to go with it. And then it's like, yeah. totally. That's what I totally meant. Good job, Carrie. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, there's, there's definitely terminology that we have down here. But have you ever made the trip to Newfoundland? Yeah, we've um, played a few times in Newfoundland. I believe I've been there about three times. 
Um, we won our very first uh, tier two event in Summerside. Okay. Yeah. Is that where it was? Summerside. Oh. Like, I think there's a Summerside PEI. Oh, no. Yeah. That's right. That was the trials. Uh, yeah. Where was the... Oh, I can't remember where it was. No, that, that that's fine. But, but like, yeah. Um, like, have... We won our very first uh, tier two event there. And it was amazing. And all of uh, Newfoundland watching and because yeah. <laughs> Brad was in the final and holy smokes. Yeah. And I was so nervous because I was like, yeah. oh, this is a lot. Like yeah. a lot of they're, people. They're, lot, they're a lively bunch. <laughs> yeah. And uh, there's such great support for Brad um, in Newfoundland. It's pretty amazing. Did you get the chance to experience George Street? Did you yep. get screeched in? I did get screeched in. <laughs> Uh, I think that was two years ago we got screeched in. That was fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I couldn't say the, yeah. the line, though. I, I, oh. That was a tongue twister. That, that, <laughs> that's fair. Everyone has a different opinion of the screech in. I'm glad I'm a Newfoundlander where I don't have to do it. But then there are Newfoundlanders that are like, I'll get screeched in every weekend. I'm like, what's wrong with you? Why? Like, you're, you're already living here. But like, My husband's also a fisherman, so the <laughs> kissing the fish didn't really creep me out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There are people that don't like that part. And I'm like, that's fair. I feel like in a post-COVID world, people are going to be like, you did this before COVID? I'm just still like... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what were we thinking? It's a, it's a fish, like, you know, but I'm sure there are people that will make that, that will make jokes again, like being post humorous and be like, you're telling me to kiss a fish. Like that's no different than kissing my wife, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, Hey, what are you talking about? And then it's just a, like, <laughs> it's like, all right, I get it. It's the humor of side things. But um, yeah, I just thought that was interesting. Cause I always think of when you team up with different people uh, from different parts of, you know, Canada, there's lingo. Like even in small parts of Newfoundland, there are people that give you a certain terminology and I've never heard of it. So I, when I went up to Ontario for university, there was like terms. I'm like, what is, what are you talking about? And they're like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, we got to meet on a separate day and we just got to go take our terms and figure out what these, what you mean when you say this and what I mean when I say that. So it's, it's so interesting to me that again, teaming up with someone from a different province like I, I imagine, of course, basic English is fine, but there are probably sometimes those words slip out. And you're just like, I wonder what they mean by this. Or like, what does that mean? But I'm glad that like Brad kind of kept it as simple as he could because Newfoundlanders have a sense of when they just get mad or when they get riled up. It's like, Buzz, what are you doing? What are you doing that for? And you're like, I, can you stop and slow down? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's too funny. <laughs> but I want to ask you too, because of course, I just want to make sure I got this right as well. But like now in the 2021, of course, going into the mixed doubles, tell me a little bit more of your experience with like Scotland per se. Cause I know we talked about off the hop of more or less, you know, getting to qualify for Canada, which obviously is like the thing you come home with and you're happy about, but like, tell me about like how you felt at the start when it wasn't going so well, then you go on the run and then like, you, you don't get the gold and then you get, you don't get the bronze, but like, tell me your whole experience. Cause I know there's highs and lows in between that. And I don't mean that to come across as like, let's, let's tear a new one. But I mean, there has to be ups and downs with everything in that tournament. Yeah. And definitely the first game, um, the games go by so fast and I didn't even know we were in the eighth end. <laughs> I was like, Oh, Oh my God. Yeah. Don't yeah. hit that because this is yeah. the last end. And I was like, yeah. Oh, my gosh and I was panicking I was like we have one minute left to play one more end and I was like but then because I just came off of playing 10 ends in women's right yeah. so I was just like oh this goes by so fast and but uh after we got our first win under our belt and uh like Brad and I didn't play the greatest um we said that afterwards we we're like oh we both just weren't firing like at yeah. the same time um and uh, for me, I struggled with some of the paths in the ice and um, things like that. Uh, I tried to adjust to, and if you uh, got caught, if I, you weren't hitting the broom or your target, and if you were outside of that, it uh, definitely was a little patchy. Um, so I just struggled with that a bit and figuring that out. I did a lot of sweeping. My body was, uh, yeah. was sore. Um, but I love sweeping and it's, it, it brings me into the game and, um, definitely, uh, and that arena was so cold. That was the coldest arena I've ever played in. 
I uh, got a thin jacket thinking, okay, you know, like I barely wore this jacket in at national. So yeah. I, I'd probably get away with a thin one. I was frozen. Like it was so bad. I was like, just shaking. But once I got sweeping, it was fine. Um, but yeah, Brad and I had so much fun and we had a lot of laughs out there and really embraced it. And um, that's kind of what I want to go out and do and just have some fun. And um, we were disappointed to not medal, um, but we gave it our all every single game. Uh, we didn't let up and we fought back. We had some comebacks in a lot of those games and uh, that's something to be pretty proud of. Yeah, like I, I kind of want to mention this because it's interesting to me. Like you have a team, you, you like yourself and the other members of your team, like you're all, you know, skips. So like, does it make a difference? Of course, like I kind of look at it from a leader perspective of, and I could be wrong in that where curling is, of course, like a team sport, obviously. But like there's always, I feel like in any sport, there's like, you know, a leader or a captain and then everyone follows that lead. So in a mixed doubles tournament, yeah, you get a few that, okay, they're not the captains of their team, but they get along. But when it comes to say two captains coming head to head or on a mixed team, like who really kind of takes the lead or is it like a kind of a dynamic 50, 50 where it's like, I think we should try this shot. Well, actually I'm more accustomed to taking this shot. What do you think? Or is it more or less like someone just, I'm trusting you with this one. So let's go with that. Yeah. And it's whatever that person is seeing and feeling too. Yeah. Like if that person's throwing that shot and they see something different, let them throw it. Yeah. Um, Brad and I, uh, we're usually on the same page with few shots. There's a couple where I wasn't quite seeing. I was like, yeah, I don't know. Um, maybe let's play this. And, but then, um, some, some of the shots I wasn't sold on, which I wish I would have been like, nope, just believe it and trust it. Um, but, uh, yeah, for most part, we are on the same page and, uh, we're still learning in this game. This is our second time playing together. And, um, it's, uh, it's such a different game compared to fours and all of a sudden you'd be sitting good and they'll make a run back. And all of a sudden you're like, Oh, well, uh, we're yeah. looking against four now. Like it's, yeah. it's, you're never out of a game, even if you're up a ton which is exciting. Oh, I, we've, we've seen that. I've seen updates when like, you know, cause I, I didn't get to see a lot of the games obviously working, but it's like, you know, you'd see it and you're like, Oh man, like they're down four, nothing here. They're down three, nothing. I'm like, Oh, that's bad. Cause I, I think of it like, again, in a different sports mind where you're looking at it from a hockey point of view and you're like, how are you making up three goals? And then next minute you turn it back on. It's like, Oh my God. Now they're up five, three, like, geez. in like two innings or like whatever. I'm like, wow, that's kind of, kind of a comeback. But then at the same time, you're like, well, if they went up 5-3 in two innings, they could also maybe lose that within two innings. So it's almost like, just because you're up 4 nothing, don't mean shit. Like, no, like you, it definitely you doesn't. It. Uh, there is so much, like, even in our first game when we were down 4 nothing, I wasn't worried. I was yeah. like, nope. I would be. still figuring out the ice and we'll make some shots and yeah. just uh, just get on the board. And uh, that's what yeah. we did. And, um, I give myself some pep talk sometimes. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, just stick with it, Carrie. Yeah, yeah. Like, don't give yeah. up. Just yeah. keep throwing. Yeah. And I, uh, I feel like I would, I would do the opposite. Where that's why I'm not a curler. Where like, if you're down for nothing, I, you just see me just go like full like Will Ferrell in a movie where it's like, I'll board, just throw it, and they'll be like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> I'm like, "We have no chance of coming back here." It's like, "Yes, we do." You calm down. I'm like, I'm "Like it's all over." And then you just see me sliding into the, <laughs> into the rocks, and they're like. This guy's lost it. How did he make it here? It's like, he needs to be up all the time. Otherwise, if he's down, he loses. He's cool. I'd be like, that's a fair comparison. That would be like my curling like bio. It's like, anytime he's down, you're going to get a, a great show from him because he's just going to lose his mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to talk a little bit too, of course, because we mentioned this before the interview started, but I was interested, um, I guess, in the aspect, because I didn't know about this about you, but doing a little bit of research... Uh, about the Métis part. And, you know, I, I mentioned this off before the interview started. I like how he just like kind of ducked in the background. I wanted to point it out because I thought I he like literally slid in the background there. Um, but like, talk to me a little bit about this because there is a pro and a con. And I, I'd like to know what your opinion is because the pro of it, I think, is if people don't know necessarily your background, they can't give you a label. They're just treating you as an everyday ordinary person. Mm -hmm. But the negative side of that is sometimes you want people to know that because it brings awareness. Like, for me now, knowing 
your background a little bit more. I'm like, man, like think about the Métis commu the community or the indigenous community that kind of looks at her now and says, she's winning. She's winning in curling. She's doing it. And there's could be other indigenous people out there that are like, well, if she's doing it, I can do it too. Yeah, uh, exactly. And I, um, my dad is Métis and I just recently got my Métis, um, working on getting my Métis status with COVID. It's uh, been a little uh, slow process with that. And um, it's definitely, um, like I, <laughs> I just, uh, a friend of mine, I approached him with uh, sponsorship and um, he was like, well, is anyone on your team Métis? And I was like, well, I am. And he's yeah. like, really? I didn't know yeah. that about you. I was like, yeah, not a lot of people do. <laughs> Um, and so it's something that I'm, I'm proud of and, yeah. um, being a mate, strong Métis woman and chasing my dreams and doing what I love to do. And I hope to empower other Métis women and children that they can chase their dreams as well. Um, yeah. I've just always been so determined and, um, to just keep working hard at something that I love to do. So, um. And they are have been absolutely so supportive of us. It's it's amazing. Um, I they reach out to me all the time and um, congratulating us. And it, it's um, it's it's such an honor to have such uh, all their support behind us. And it's it's pretty amazing. And uh, just knowing that they'll always have your back. I'm very grateful for uh, all their support. Yeah, because I can I can imagine like it's when you were saying about getting your status and like, you know, getting, you know, obviously the sponsorship, like it must kind of like, obviously you felt pretty strongly to go to get this sponsorship, not, not to like kind of boast it like, Oh, like look at me, I'm Métis or whatever, but like mm -hmm. to kind of, I guess, give it somewhat of the significance of saying like, Hey, just in case you didn't know, like this is who we're sponsored by. And you know, it gives them a little bit of exposure as well. Like it's like me coming on this podcast and saying, okay, I have a disability. And then, you know, it could be like three weeks down the road. It's like Sturge Weber Foundation or whatever, you know, is a sponsorship of this podcast. It's not like the overall big factor, but at least it gives it a little bit of an awareness or gives them a little bit of like, hey, just in case you were wondering, this like this is something that you maybe want to check out or maybe want to know a little bit more about. Is that like how you kind of, I guess, looked into it or felt like with a sponsorship, like it's giving them a little bit more exposure, but at the same point telling people like, Hey, if you're out there and you're belonging to this community, you know, check me out. Like I can be a role model for you, but at the same time as you can do the same thing I'm doing. So just letting you know. <laughs> yeah, I definitely want to be um, a role model for everyone out there and um, being a Métis woman and um, just, yeah, just having all their support is, is amazing. And it's, uh, like how that sponsorship came about um, was, yeah, with just one of my friends and we talked and uh, set up a meeting um, with the Métis Federation and they sat down with us and yeah. And with COVID, we haven't been able to all physically meet, which is yeah. um, challenging. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty amazing to have a background like this and um I'm still learning so much more about it too. I'm still doing research and um, learning more and more each day. And uh, yeah. yeah, and like even my girls talk about it. And yeah. uh, it's, and I've, we've been learning together and yeah. seeing each other. So yeah. The other two, like, I guess, kind of personal questions. And again, you can always kind of pass on it or tell me, like, yeah, fuck you. Like, I don't want to answer those. But, um, <laughs> The, I want to answer because I, I did think it was interesting. Like, again, there's always like timbits about, you know, whether in the like, athletes where you realize like either something that they do before a game or after a game or something personal that you're like, oh, I didn't know that. Like, I thought it was kind of interesting, um, you know, where your brother passed away due to like a snowmobile accident of you having the necklace. And I think it has like a picture of you and him in it. But like, tell me like the significance of that, because I have I don't wear it because I'm afraid I'll ever lose it. And my parents would probably shoot me if I did. <laughs> But I have, it's like a, just a Newfoundland necklace, but it's like a, a ring on it that has B and stood for my, I think it was like my grandfather or great grandfather. And it just happened that I ended up being named Brian, but they gave it to me. And I thought, okay, well, I don't want to lose it. Like it might have more value to me down the road, obviously, but 
you don't want to like have the value and be loot and then lose it after and you'd be like, Oh, like I didn't take care of it when I was 14 or 15 and now I lost it. But explain how the necklace idea came to be and the importance of having that with you. Yeah. Um, this was something my brother and I shared together. Um, we, I remember the last time that I curled next to him. It was actually here in Gimli. We were playing in one of our, um, uh, play downs for provincials and we both looked at each other we're ne both on the same sheet and we just said let's uh let's make this a flat duo and win this yeah uh, that was something i'll carry with me forever and uh i definitely miss him every single day and think about him so much um my girls talk about him all the time which that yeah. helps and um yeah, I just have that necklace with me. And I also have a little something in my pocket that okay. I, I always rub or put my hand in my pocket. Yeah. So if you see that, then you'll know what I'm doing. <laughs> um, but uh, I always make sure to have something with me when I'm on the ice. Um, and I also had a, have a necklace in with my grandparents too. They were um, huge curly fans of mine and um, they passed away in a head-on car accident uh just mm -hmm. before i had the girls actually okay. and uh yeah so that losing um those three were very very hard for me um because they're just such big supporters of my curling as well and um so i know they're looking down on me and they are very happy for me and um i miss them every day and think of them every day yeah i i just thought it was interesting like to, to bring up because you know, when I did a little bit of research and found out that I'm like, okay, cool. And like, as we discussed prior, and you know, some kind, sometimes when an interviewer asks you this stuff, there are people like, again, we're on a social media world where everyone has like an opinion where it's like, how dare you ask that? But I'm like, it's like when I was talking about this sweater, uh, like, you know, if someone's asking me like, what's, what's the deal with the sweater? I'm not going to be like, oh, how dare you? Like I wore this. How dare you ask me about something I'm wearing? Like, how could you? So it's like, I feel like by doing that, you're kind of, creating a symbol where it's like, Hey, if you have a question, ask me, I'm not going to be like, like deteriorate away from it or be like, how dare you? It's like, it's like me wearing a Detroit Red Wings hat. And then someone's like, you're a Detroit Red Wings fan. I'm like, ah, how dare you ask me about the Detroit Red Wings? Like, no, like they're like, but you have a hat on. Why wouldn't I ask you? Um, so yeah, I just thought that was like an interesting yeah. side piece. The other thing that I wanted to really get into, cause you know, when we actually posted this, I asked people to vote one, two or three because we had three cover arts. A lot of people chose one because it was like the red and white for Canada. I'm like, good, good idea. But I noticed in a lot of these pictures, uh, there's a lot of emotion. There's a lot of like, looks like mid scream. And I'm like, really, you can't just get her a decent picture. Like it looks like she's always mad all the time. But I noticed that there's like a tattoo, I think around like your wrist area. And I, I think it's like, I'm going to call it a bird or an eagle, but feel free to be like, you are totally uh, actually, dead wrong. That's for my brother. So oh, really? Okay. Oh, oh, there we go. There you go. What? <laughs> Can't really. Yeah. It's uh, in memory of my brother. I got it um, after he passed away. And um, yeah, it's just a symbol that he'll always be with me. And, you know, at every, every chance I get, I talk about him. So if anyone ever asks me, yeah, yeah I might get emotional. But yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. It's been uh, 14 years and it's still emotional and it uh, never gets easy. The other thing I want to get into you a little bit with to kind of close it off, maybe the last five or 10 minutes here, uh, a little bit of fun aspect, because we know when we do curling interviews, you get a lot of the curling questions. You get a lot of the, you know, oh, like, tell me about this shot. Tell me how your team formed. That's all good and fun. But what mm -hmm. people probably don't know is a little bit of the personal fun side of things. So like when you're not curling, when you're not doing your work, when you're not like, you know, in a care home telling people like, Hey, this is why I took that shot. Hey, and Mary, can you leave me alone? It's, it's been four years. Uh, tell me like what kind of things you do for fun. Obviously you probably interact with your kids. Otherwise I'd hate to see your answer be like, no, they're over in another room. I don't interact with them at all. <laughs> <laughs> um, for things that we do for fun, um, definitely go down to the lake lots. Um, my parents just bought a place uh just north of here and they just recently got sea dues so oh, uh, nice. we definitely i can't wait to go and test those out um we love to go camping that's uh and we really rough it 
Like it's yes. not like luxury camper, you know, <laughs> we do the whole tent and everything. Um, and we also do, um, yeah, just a lot of outside stuff, quadding and the girls absolutely love driving the quad. They, um, my husband at first was like, they can't drive it. I was like, yeah, they can. Yeah. A, I was a country girl. I was on that quad at seven years old and ripping around. <laughs> <laughs> and so the girls, they put on their helmets and they go and drive around and they absolutely love it. And uh, yeah, we go through, around through the back. I, we got a, about 160 acres here. So we uh, got a lot of property and um, we like snowmobiling as well. And um, so yeah, we just love the outdoors. I want to ask you too, and, and like a fun aspect as well is like, mm -hmm. what are some of the, like some music that you listen to or some artists that you enjoy or like some TV shows you binge? Because I know a lot of people now are talking about the the Friends reunion. We actually had like one of the recent acts that we had on was like, oh yeah, I cried learning about Rachel and Ross. So I was like, I didn't cry, but I was interested to find out that like two of them had a legit crush on each other, but they were both in a relationship at the time. Like it's, it's fun stuff like that, but what kind of stuff I guess is your, I'm not going to say like uh dirty secret or dirty deed, but what kind of things do you like enjoy on the side, like TV shows or movies or. Well, I am a huge country fan. So I listen to a <laughs> lot of country music. Um, Aaron Prouchette, actually when my brother passed away, um, my friend Roz, it was good friends with Aaron and actually he came out and visit us at our house. And, oh, wow. Yeah. It was very special. We played a broom ball tournament the next day and yeah, I'll always remember that. And, uh, we'll have a very special spot in my heart. And, um, also for TV shows, uh, Yellowstone was huge for me and the ranch. Okay. Also big one. Um, and Grey's Anatomy constantly watch that <laughs> all the drama <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah i i was um, like i was big on like i have a, a sister-in-law that like watch grace and she she's a nurse i i think she, like she's now in a different role at nursing but it's just her, like i get it if it's something that you're interested in or your field it's great but like i don't think there's really i shouldn't say that i shouldn't because when i was younger we had like radio free roscoe and radioactive for like broadcasting but i don't think there's a lot of like drama related i guess like news or podcast or like you know shows because i can just imagine like I, I could probably be the one that creates it but it just i don't know how you'd create it it's like oh my god we got a breaking news story it's like oh wow what happened today and like blah blah, blah. it's like all right so that's just an everyday news story i'm like yeah you're probably right that's not a tv yeah. show <laughs> i also watch 911. that's a good okay. one and yeah. uh the good doctor <laughs> oh the, yeah yeah the good doctor is interesting i haven't seen it but i, I like the like the kind of story behind it like mm -hmm. i i i feel like i want to have that actor on that plays it and just be like because I'm, I'm kind of without doing the research i'm like does he actually have this kind of disability or lisp or mm -hmm. whatever or like is it just acting because if it's acting good acting if he does i'm like good casting because you're actually giving people of a disability or whatever a, you know a, a place or a voice which is interesting yeah. as well like were you ever a fan of say like the big bang theory friends or like full house or any of that as well? Oh, huge full house fan. <laughs> uh, my girls and I have watched that on Netflix over and over and over again. <laughs> um, and I grew up watching it as well and friends too. Um, but not like huge into it. Yeah. Um, I haven't watched a new one that came out the reunion. So uh, yeah. definitely uh, want to watch that. Yeah. I, I think it's interesting because when you mentioned about the full house aspect, it's like, my, I have a niece that watches it and like she watches the Fuller House. I never really got into the Fuller House. I again, I watched Full House, but it's just so interesting because even when Full House was on for me, they're like, you know, in the last few seasons. And to watch like a niece now watch it at seven, I'm just like, are, are, are we old? Are, are, are we old? Like, because she, because sometimes you don't know if they know, I guess with YouTube and all that, they know that Uncle Jesse is not what he looks like now or like what he looked like back then. He's different now. But there's, yeah. there's still that side of me that's like, man, we're getting old. Like, I, I can't really watch Full House without knowing what Uncle Jesse looks like now. And that's not a rip on him. It's just basically like, I, I get it. You're you're getting there. Like, you're getting old. Everyone gets old. But yeah, yeah there's like some shows I'll look back at and you get lost in the moment. Like, I was a big Boy Meets World fan. So I still get wrapped up in like a Cory and Topanga. And I'm like, oh, they still look like that now. And I'm like, oh, no, they don't. But I watched don't that do too, that to me. Actually, I totally forgot about it until you said it. I'm like, yeah, oh, yeah. 
yeah. my brother and I would come home after school and put on Boy Meets World. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there, yeah. It's like it's funny because I, I have like all the seasons of these different shows. Like you mentioned about country, it's like I grew up listening to Reba and then watching the show Reba, and it's like mm-hmm. you, you sometimes forget when you're watching it on like CMT. You're like, oh, this looks like it's could have been filmed yesterday. It's like no, that was like eight years ago. I'm like, really? It's been that long? Like holy crap! But, um, <laughs> The, the last thing I want to get into you with is I want to play just a quick game of how Canadian it's not a, it's not a trivia question. Don't worry about it. But like okay. <laughs> we have a, uh, it, it's pretty much, we ask certain acts when they come on, like tell me a very Canadian story, which like Canadians would obviously understand. And we've had different acts on like splash and boots, Sarah nurse, uh, Canadian hockey player. And they give you a story of like, the one that always comes up is when you open the door for someone and it's like, yeah. then they have to run to the door and you say, sorry. Like, it's almost like, Oh man, like what is the appropriate amount of time that you have to open the door where you don't feel like you're the one feeling guilty where it's like, I seen you come and I opened the door, but it's like, Oh man, you were too far in the distance. Or they mentioned about like um, Tim Hortons. When you offer someone a Tim Hortons coffee, it's very Canadian, but like, can you think of a very Canadian moment that like you realized, okay, that's something very distinctively Canadian when you went, say, elsewhere in the world? Um, I can't really think of one. <laughs> but um, definitely something that was Canadian for me um, was when we were in the bubble. And uh, we, since n- not being able to have any of our friends and family there, Kristen reached out to all of our family and friends and they made videos dressed in uh, red and white, waving yeah. their can of flags. And it was absolutely amazing and had so many tears and laughs and, oh yeah, all the things that they were doing. Um, don't mind my dogs. Sorry, no, no. they're rallying at each <laughs> he, other. <laughs> he's agreeing. He's like, he's like, that was very Canadian. I loved it. <laughs> um, that was he, he, he agrees. He's basically saying, don't forget me. I was wearing red, too. Yeah. And this is Briar. <laughs> She's oh. a, uh, yeah, we just got her. She is four months old. Yeah. So and her name is Briar. <laughs> oh, af- yeah. is it after is it after the Tim Hortons Briar? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's like, why didn't you name her Scotty's? Yeah. <laughs> Because it's not a it's not a Scottish dog, or it's not like yeah. you know what you expect it to be, yeah. But uh, but yeah, like I think that's I think that's interesting because yeah, you're you're right. Like I I seen obviously the posts where people were wearing Canadian colors and supporting you, and like I have an aunt that was on like every time Gushu posted stuff, and this is again where it comes to the support from different parties or different teams, but like they would tell you the reminder of like, hey, check out Brad and Carrie. But I like how they included it because some teams will just be like. This is our member, so let's support our member. And yeah, we also have this person that's on a different team, so whatever. But I like how they included everyone involved. Like even when I think it's like uh, Gushu has, I, I don't want to butcher the name, but like I think it's Laura Walker's husband is on the team. So even when Laura was playing, they posted stuff like, you know, telling her or telling us pretty much support her as well because one of our members is in- married to her. And I'm like, oh, that's nice. Like it's a very supportive system. But yeah, I uh, felt so much support. Uh, team you, prob- you probably had a lot of Newfoundlander friends. Amazing, I love it. And yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. Like even some of the pictures that would show up on my feeds of yeah, people waving their Canada flags and oh, it just uh, melted my heart. And feeling that love and support from back home, it's yeah. definitely amazing uh, how uh, yeah, Canada they will have your back and. Uh, I have such amazing uh, family, friends, and fans uh, cheering us on, and it's pretty special. Yeah, like and now, I've obviously you get a chance to like, like you said earlier, like you want to go to the Olympics to represent either like the women's side or the mixed doubles side. Like, I I don't know if you've ever done this. I've done it probably a few times because I've seen now on LinkedIn that they're trying to get the Vancouver Olympics for like twenty thirty two. And I'm remembering the Vancouver Olympics from 2010. And it feels weird to me because I'm like, I'm getting very old when that's like, you think about it as yesterday. But like the atmosphere in Vancouver, like I, I kind of get emotional to the point that there's a clip or a video when they do like the, the end package of the Olympics. And I think it's like Brian Wilson saying for the last time, good night from Vancouver. And I'm like, no, 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 not good night from Vancouver. Yeah. <laughs> Can we keep this going? But like we had, because um, I think Cheryl Bernard is one of the ones that we have on coming hopefully soon. And, but I want to ask you, like, who were some of the curlers that you kind of looked up to? Because 
there's a great story with Cheryl Bernard of she's winning the silver medal. And a lot of people would be down about winning a silver medal, but she was like, no, I, I earned this. I won this. And then you have, you know, obviously from Manitoba, Jennifer Jones, which I'm not even like hugely into curling when I was younger, but if someone mentioned Jennifer Jones, I was like, of course she's in the final. Of course she's doing this. It's always Jennifer Jones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. And Sandra Schmerler was a big one for me too. Um, I grew up watching her and um, idled her like she was amazing yeah. and uh yeah cheryl what love cheryl <laughs> she uh she was someone i also looked up to and uh, she reaches out to me quite often uh and colleen jones she was amazing yeah <laughs> growing up watching her as well and uh, kelly scott another one like there's just so many amazing uh curlers out there and uh i grew i watched curling that's all i did was yeah. just even if curling's on TV, I watched it. Even now I do. If I'm not even playing, I'm watching <laughs> it. And I've uh, been starting to even watch back more of my games as well because I never used to like doing yeah. that. So I was like, oh, I don't like watching myself. <laughs> oh, that's how um, I feel. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's definitely uh, so many strong, strong women out there in our sport. And I mean, and then you get the next wave of it, of course, with like yourself, Rachel, Laura, um, you know, creating, and then obviously there's others as well. But like, to me, when I see it on TV, it's like, those are like the big three that I'm watching, but it's just interesting. Cause like, you're always competing against each other. And it's, it's like, okay, well, they're like you said earlier, your friends on the side, but to me, it's like, okay, that's a, a great next wave. And you still have like a few from the older generation that are still playing. And I feel like when you go up against them, do you ever like if you idolize them, do you ever have that moment where it's like the out of body experience where it's like, I'm up against someone that idolized? Um, well, I had a struggle with Jennifer Jones for many, many years. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think I lost her about 20 times in yeah. a row. Um, so <laughs> that one was challenging. I was like, oh, yeah. got to beat her sometime. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And when I did, it was like a, I was relieved. I was like, yeah, it's like I, I got, I finally got one. I got one. Yeah, <laughs> one, and I think I got like twenty more <laughs> to catch yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. Um, but definitely playing against uh, Jen when I was younger, and um, and yeah, and it's nerve wracking too, right? Like you're like, yeah. oh gosh, you know she's Olympian, and you're yeah. playing against her, and um, yeah, I went. Like we would hang in for some of the games, we'd be so close, and then all of a sudden we'd give up a big end. And we're like, oh, yeah. I thought we had yeah. this one. <laughs> but yeah, it uh, definitely have had a lot of games games against Jen. Yeah, my la I guess like my last question to kind of close it out. Then what we do is we'll do like a brief promo and shout out at the end. But my last question here would be: Tell me, I guess, either a very funny or a very embarrassing story about your curling career. And I feel like you're going to be like, I'm not telling you anything about my curling career. Come on. I'm not telling you a funny or embarrassing story. <laughs> about my curling career? Yeah. Like about like something that could have happened in curling that like you look back at it after and you either laugh or you're like, man, that was embarrassing. But still you're like, okay, it was embarrassing for the time, but you learned something out of it. Um, oh gosh, I really got to think of this one. <laughs> um, oh man. I can't think of anything. Like you have to warn me about this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, that, that's fine. If you if you can't think of one, I guess my my other last question would be like, tell me something that you're looking forward to in 2021, or like a major accomplishment that you look back at and like that kind of um, made you either more confident or peaked, or like you know made you think like, okay, we can go further because it's like anything. Once you win your first say championship in something, you're like, okay, so I've got one. I've got that past me. What's next? Yeah, when we won our very first uh, Canadian championship, that was pretty special. And then to win back to back, I never thought in, yeah. I, I never dreamt about that. And to do it, I was like, wow, that's pretty special because not a whole lot of teams have done that. Yeah. Uh, so to be able to do that is is pretty special. And um, definitely, I'm really looking forward to what our future holds with this team and uh, we're already starting our off season and working extremely hard to get better. Um, I know our world's performance we were disappointed with, but the grit and the determination that we showed to fight back from a one in five start. Yeah. Uh, 
that's something to be very proud of and I'm proud of my teammates uh, for sticking in there and uh, um, getting that spot for Canada. Yeah, I feel like if you ask Jennifer Jones the same question, she'd be like, what are you talking about? All I do is win. I'm just still like, I'm like, okay, easy there, Jen. Like, relax. <laughs> That's going to do it for this episode of Tobin Tonight. Our thanks to Kiri Enerson for coming on to the show. Remember, you can find past, present, and future episodes on TobinTonight.com, Spotify, and iTunes. Follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and leave a comment or two. For Tobin and myself, this is Jacob saying thank you for listening and good night.